Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. <laughs> oh, it doesn't get more classic than airplane. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're gonna to be talking about planers. See, right now in my shop, I've got three planers. We're gonna take a look at each one of these planers, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my experience in dealing with planers over the years. So let's get started and talk about planers. So if you've been woodworking for a bit, you're probably starting to consider on whether or not you should get a planer to take your woodworking to the next level. I hardly know her. I know this is exactly what I did probably about after a year of woodworking, once I realized I really enjoyed this craft. And if you have any questions on whether or not you should get a planer or a jointer first, in my opinion, you should always get a planer first. And that's because you can do almost everything you can do over at the joiner with your table saw and your planer. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about taking a look at three different types of planers and figuring out which planer might best suit your needs. So let's get started and take a look at these planers. So here are the three planers that we're gonna take a look at today. We have an entry-level Craftsman, we have a mid-tier Vever, and we have an advanced DeWalt 735. So let's start talking about these planers and get into the details of each one. So the first thing that we need to talk about is price. Price was one of the main components I used when making a decision about purchasing my first planer, so it's an important piece of the puzzle. So let's talk about the price of these three planers. So this is the very first planer that I ever purchased, and this is the Craftsman Lunchbox Planer. The nice thing about this planer is it's usually in stock at your local Lowe's, so you can pick one up usually the same day. And the price on this planer is $349. The next planer we're gonna take a look at is the Vever Thicknesser. Now in full disclosure, this was sent free to me. However, there were no stipulations on how I rated this item. So we're gonna take an honest look at it. Now in my opinion, this is an intermediate planer. And this thing is currently in stock on amazon.com for $366. The third and final planer that we're gonna take a look at is the DeWalt 735X. And this is the planer that I currently roll with. That's how I roll. Now this off the shelf costs $652. However, I've done some major upgrades to this planer and as it sits, it's $1,595. And we're gonna talk about some of those upgrades in just a bit. So obviously price is a big component on making the decision to purchase your first planer. And you can see there's not as much of a variance between the price of a beginner planer to an intermediate planer as there is from an intermediate planer to a professional planer. And that brings us to our next component we should be taking a look at when purchasing a planer, and that's the number of blades and the blade type. So let's take a look at the blades on each one of these planers. So first off, let's take a look at the Craftsman planer. Now this planer only has two blades in it, and this blade is about a half inch thick. Now the one nice thing about this blade is it's double-sided, so that when one side gets dull, you can flip the blade around and you have a fresh new side. Now this is a very common feature that many planers have. If we take a look at the Weber planer, this has actually got three blades. So this gives you 50% more cuts on the rotation of that drum. Now one thing I did want to mention with these blades is they are single beveled and they're a half inch similar to the Craftsman planer. If we take a look at the DeWalt planer, we're dealing with three blades as well in this machine. Now these blades are a little bit thicker than the previous two planers. These blades are approximately 7 eighths of an inch wide, and they're also double beveled, so once you get one side dull, you can flip them over and have a fresh side. Now the reason that I didn't show you the blades that are currently installed in that DeWalt planer is because I made a major upgrade. I have a Shelix helical cutter head installed in that machine. Let me tell you a little bit about my experience. So let me start off by saying helical cutter heads are amazing. They leave a finish on your wood that's far superior than any straight blade. The problem is these cutter heads are expensive. Whether you get a Grizzly, a Shelix, or any other brand, they can go for as much as 400, maybe even $500 for a 13 inch planer. So this is when I thought, why don't I purchase an aftermarket helical cutter head and install it onto my planer? So I watched tons of YouTube videos, and they all said the same thing. This is a little tricky. And they were right. I broke two planers trying to install a Grizzly cutter head into a planer. Let me tell you what happened. So I went to grizzly.com and I purchased a kit that included the DeWalt planer as well as the helical cutter head that they make that goes in it. The problem is the planer they sent was a 734 planer and the helical cutter head was for a 735. So I got on the internet and I tried to install the wrong cutter head for this planer. I took the entire planer apart, 
only to find out that that cutter head wouldn't fit in that planer. Now to Grizzly's defense, they fixed the entire problem. Their customer service is top notch. They sent me an entirely new planer, which was the correct planer, as well as a brand new cutter head. So once I got the new equipment, I got back on YouTube and I Googled deep on how to find the best instructional videos on how to install this new cutter head into my planer. And there were no videos, absolutely no videos. They only had videos on how to install a Shelix cutter head into my planer. So I used these videos on how to install a Shelix cutter head to install my Grizzly cutter head. The problem is it's not perfect. And I did get it installed, but I had a couple of problems afterwards. The problems weren't immediate. In fact, I went about a year having some of the smoothest plain wood I'd ever had in my shop. But about at the year mark, I started to notice my planer was making some weird noises. And then one day, my planer exploded on me. Teeth shattered on this thing and belts and bearings fell on the floor. And that's the problem in my opinion. Although I consider myself quite mechanical, trying to install one of these items on your own with the rotation of this planer at such high speeds really requires a whole lot of precision. So I gave up and I left the installation to the experts and I purchased a pre-installed Shelix cutter head on a DeWalt 735 installed by Bird Tools and I've never looked back. So let's go take a look at this cutter head that took me about a year to get right. So here is the infamous helical cutter head. And as you can see, it's made up of a bunch of small square blades. Now the nice thing about having a square blade is that it has four sides. So when one side gets dull, you have three more sides to work with. The other nice thing about having these small blades is if one gets chipped, you simply have to replace that one blade instead of an entire row. Well, that about covers it for blades. Now that you have an idea of what type of blades can be installed in these planers, let's take a look at another important piece of the puzzle, which is dust collection. Now, if you've ever used a planer, you know you need good dust collection. So let's start off by taking a look at the Craftsman planer. Now, the nice thing about this planer is it actually has a two-in-one port. It can accommodate a four inch hose as well as a two and a half inch hose. Now, the nice thing about the two and a half inch hose is that it can accommodate most shop vacs. If we take a look at the Vever, it's got a much smaller port, and this is actually two inches. The only dust collector that I found that would fit this is actually a Festool dust collector, and it fits a little weird as it actually fits the base of the hose versus the knob that you usually fit into it. Lastly, if we look at the DeWalt, you can see a very similar design that we saw in the Craftsman. You have the ability to attach to a four inch hose as well as a smaller hose. So obviously I'm a little partial to those two-in-one ports as I think it's really nice to have the smaller port so that you can attach something like a shop vac. And then once you upgrade to a bigger dust collection system that has a four inch port, this thing is ready to go. So now that we've taken a look at the dust collection of each one of these planers, let's take a look at their capacity. I've got each one of these planers raised up to their max height. So we're gonna look at the width and height that each one of these planers can cut. So we'll start off with the Craftsman. Now the Craftsman has a six inch height as well as just a little bit over 12 inches for the cut width. With the Vever, we can get just a little bit higher. Now it only goes up to six and a half, but I can actually raise this to about six and three quarters. If you can see, yeah. the numbers all go to 11. If we look at the width of the capacity, we're right at 13 inches exactly. And finally, with the DeWalt, it's got a dead stop right at six inches and it goes 13 inches in width. So these planers have fairly similar capacities. The only difference is the Craftsman only goes to a 12 inch width versus the other two which go to 13. Also that Vever goes to six and three quarters of an inch high versus the other two which only go to six. Now the next thing that I wanna take a look at is the in-feed and out-feed table. Now if you've ever planed really long pieces of wood, you know how critical those in-feed and out-feed tables are to give the support to the wood as you're pushing it through your planer. So we'll start off with the Craftsman and as to be expected, it's got the smallest bed coming in at 23 and a half inches long. So if we take a look at the Vever, you'll actually notice something a little different. It's actually got a roller on the in-feed and the out-feed table. So if we take a measurement from both rollers, we're right at about 35 inches long. So another feature that the Vever has that the other two don't have is this roller system on top. And if you're doing a lot of repetitive planing, this is great because you can easily roll it back and forth across your planer and refeed it into the planer. And lastly, the DeWalt coming in at a whopping 37 and three quarters of an inch long. 
So as you can see, there's really no surprises here. At the price point of a Craftsman, you have the smallest bed, but when you move over to the DeWalt, you're gonna get the longest bed. I was pleased to see, however, that the Weber had such a long bed for its price point. So now I wanna talk about the next feature that I think is important when picking out a planer, and that's the speed adjustment of the rotation of the drum. So first off, Craftsman does not have the ability to change the speed of rotation on the blades. So that's something to consider if this is one of the planers you're thinking about. The Vever, on the other hand, does have a speed adjustment with this orange knob. It has two set points where you can adjust the speed of the blade. The DeWalt also has two speeds, and it's very clearly labeled so you can tell what each speed does. The first speed is the finishing speed, and that's 179 cuts per inch. The second one is the dimensional speed, and that's 96 cuts per inch. So if you're a beginning woodworker, speeds may not be that important. I know they weren't to me. However, the more I go down this woodworking path, I've come to find out that it's nice to go at a slower speed when I'm rough milling out my lumber. Then when I'm finishing up, I can go at the faster speed and make a smoother surface. So before we move on to more features, I wanna remind you that I'm gonna leave links to all these tools in the description below. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Now let's take a look at some more features. So if you've ever worked with a planer before, you know you're gonna to have to make some adjustments every once in a while or switch out a blade. So let's look at the tools that come with each one of these planers. So with the Craftsman, you really only need one tool, and that's to switch out the blades. And to switch out the blades, you need a star key. And the nice thing about this is it fits in the frame of the planer. Now with the Vever, it comes with two tools. It comes with an Allen key and a cheap little wrench. Now this thing has got no onboard storage for these tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and say these two tools are gonna get lost. Now the best tool system out of all three of these planers comes with the DeWalt, and it's got a star key that rests right inside the frame of the planer. The other nice thing about this star key is it's actually got a magnetic base, and this allows you to do things like pick up your blades and not have them get lost or fall into the planer. Now before we wrap up this video and turn some of these planers on, I did want to mention a couple of features that the DeWalt planer has that neither of the other two have. Let's go take a look at it. So these two features are excellent features that allow DeWalt to charge a premium for their product. They become critically important when you're going to mill up your lumber. Let's go take a look at these two features. So the first feature is this little knob on the side, and this is a depth stop. And what this does is it prevents your planer from going below this depth. Now this is great when you're trying to plane down wood to the same thickness. And this goes from 1 8 of an inch all the way up to 1 and a quarter inch. The next feature is the material removal gauge. And what this does is it tells you how much material will be planed off at the current setting. So when you push your lumber through, it'll tell you exactly how much material is gonna get planed off. And these are two premium features that only that DeWalt planer has. And that's why that planer costs just a little bit more. And these are features that a beginning woodworker or an intermediate woodworker may not have the need for. So now that we've kind of exhausted all the features that all three of these planers have, let's turn these things on and take a look at them. The next thing that I wanna do is to see how loud each one of these is. So we're gonna go through all three of these planers and turn on a decibel reader and find out which one is the loudest. So let's start off with that Craftsman. So here we have the Craftsman. Let's turn this thing on and see how loud it gets. And that looks like it was getting to about 80 to 81 decibels. Next up, let's fire up the Vever. And that had a very comparable 80 to 81 decibels. Lastly, let's take a look at the DeWalt. And the DeWalt was just a little bit louder at 82 to 83 decibels. So obviously that wasn't very scientific, but I was just curious to see if any planer was louder than the other. And as you can see, there's really no difference between all three planers. So the final thing that I wanna do in this quick little planer comparison is to run a piece of walnut through each one of those planers. I wanna look at two things. I wanna to look to see if there's any difference in the cut quality, and I also wanna see if there's any snipe as I run this wood through the planers. So here I've got three pieces of rough cut walnut, and they have a little bit of figure in them, so I'll be interested to see how these planers can handle them. On the back of each one of these pieces, you can see that I've labeled them with the corresponding planer that they'll be going into. So DeWalt, Vever, and Craftsman. So let's run them through the planer and see what we get. 
But before I do that, I did want to mention that I put brand new blades in the Craftsman. Obviously the Vever is brand new, and I think the helical cutter head will do just fine with the blades it's got. So let's take a quick look at the results. I was actually very pleased with all three of these planers, especially the Vever and the DeWalt, as they actually powered through some really highly figured wood. If we flip it around to look at the plane side, the Craftsman did really well. There's some minor snipe on both ends, but overall this did a great job. The Vever essentially has no snipe. There may be just barely a little bit on either end, but it really handled that figure quite well. Finally, the DeWalt did fabulous. There's essentially no snipe on either side. Now snipe is something that can absolutely be fixed and there are a million videos out there to show you how to fix snipe. So I was more concerned about the cut quality and I'll be honest, there really is very little difference between all three of these planers. Now the only difference is I did leave my DeWalt at a dimensional setting and this is a slower setting. And I know for a fact, if I were to place it to the finishing setting, this thing would be as smooth as glass. So the moral of the story here is pick a planer that works for you. Whether it's a beginner planer, an intermediate planer, or a professional planer, there's a planer that has all the features that you need depending on what your budget is. And that was the purpose of today's video, was to show you the features of these three planers so that you can make a decision for yourself. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I know it's a little bit different than a lot of the videos I normally do, but I thought it was quite interesting. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. Until next time, take care as always.